Hello, and welcome to the Codex Cantina. We have a very special guest this evening. I have with me... Crypto Yellow. And Miss Crypto Yellow here read her very first chapter novel, a children's novel by Roald Dahl, and she read... James and the Giant Peach. This was one of my favorite books when I was a little kid, and so... Miss uh, Crypto Yellow and I here are going to go through the book, talk about a few items that she liked, talk about the plot, maybe a few themes, analyze a little bit. Sound good? Yes. So, do you remember when this book was published? Because we always start off with publication information. One, six, nine, one. Oh, you were so close. One nine six one nineteen sixty one. James and the Giant Peach was published, and this was just one year before the death of his uh, daughter Olivia. And if you look inside the book here, it actually says this book is for Olivia and Tessa. James and the Giant Peach starts off with. Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna drink water. Okay. You can drink water too. And Sponge and Aunt Spiker make. James go to his room. Okay, and how does James end up with the two aunts? They die. <laughs> Do you remember how they die? They got eaten by a cloud that is a dinosaur or something. It was like a rhinoceros, right? The rhinoceros ate his parents. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, right? I mean, that's really, really sad. And I think that what Roald Dahl here is doing is he's setting up a very, very typical story, what we call the hero's journey. All right, and in a hero's journey, you have a tragedy, and then the hero will go through some type of growth, and then rise up to the occasion to be, become a hero, and then become a leader, or do something heroic, uh, something of that nature in the story. We're going to kind of see that as we go through here, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right, so do you remember how he wrote the beginning of this story? Because I think your mother read this out loud to you, and that was really important, because... In chapter two, it was talking about Aunt Sponge, and how did he write this? With rose and nose, socks and locks. He's rhyming them. Yeah, why do you think he might rhyme them? Because, um... He likes rhyming. Because <laughs> he likes rhyming. That's true. But when you learn things when you were real little, like when you were three or four, do you remember that sometimes you would do things in a song or rhyme to help you remember them? Like sock, puck. I think Roald Dahl is doing the same thing here. We see this several times throughout the story where he introduces rhyming and songs to help you remember. Yeah. So it's really sad for James for a little while because his, his aunt seemed to be really, really mean. And then he suddenly gets something magical. What does James get? Green glowing tongues of an alligator. <laughs> and what happens to them? They sink in soil. And then? It makes the a peach go very, very big. Very, very big, yeah. And then what happens is is that the aunts start inviting people over to see the peach, right? And they lock Jim, James away, and they forget about him, and they forget to feed him. And in this part of the story, we have the aunts having this really greedy situation. Do you know what the word greedy means? It means that they're very, very mean, and they're very, very mad. Close, yeah, it means that they want to have a lot of something, and that something is money. And in this case, they're charging people to see the peach, and they forget all about their nephew, James. And in the story, this is something that we call juxtaposition. Do you know what that big word means? No, I do not. <laughs> no, you do not. So juxtaposition is where there's kind of this big change. And in here we see the orphan James that is all alone. And the peach is swarming with children and family and friends. And it's this big contrast to what James is going through at the exact same time. And he meets friends in the peach. Yeah, exactly. So he meets some friends in the peach. So there's all these friends outside and he's all alone. So there's this contrast between all of these people and James kind of in this solidarity, kind of pathetic state. Give me another drink. Me too. 
So eventually James does get inside of the peach when he kind of runs away from his aunts, right? And who does he meet inside of the peach? Ladybug, bird, spider, silkworm, old green grasshopper, um, centipede, glowworm. That's awesome. Great job. So all these different characters have different personalities and they have all different ways that they speak to James. And I think that Roald Dahl is doing this on purpose because each of those different animals represents something that is lacking or missing inside of his life. Something that he doesn't have in a father figure or a mother figure or a friend or anything like that. But what does James do when he very first meets all of them? He get scared of them. Yeah, he kind of judges them immediately, right? Because they're all these kind of scary bugs and he himself is judging like other people have been judging him and his aunt and everything. And I think that brings out another one of the major themes of the book is Roald Dahl is talking about acceptance, is that we shouldn't judge people on their their looks, that we should judge people on their character because all of the bugs are actually really nice and they help James, don't they? Yes. Just like Belle meant the beast. <laughs> well, that's right. That's a good comparison. That's right. Don't judge a character like don't judge the beast. Exactly. You look different. So as we go through the story, James kind of goes on this adventure. And eventually, James has to step up and become the leader and the hero. And this is where we see him transform into that leadership role. Do you think James became a hero by the end of the story? Yes. And in chapter 30, one thing that I noticed when I reread this before we did this video was that one thing that Dahl did here is this is a crazy scene and it's when the spider is trying to save them from the cloud man. Do you remember that at the end of the story when cloud man is chasing them? And the way that I would describe chapter 30 is this is a zany chapter, kind of like crazy. And one thing that Dahl does in here that I didn't notice when I was a little kid was that he actually changes the spellings of some of the words. So one day, you know, many years from now, when, you know, you're 10, 12, 13 years old, I think you should go back and reread this book because I think you'll be able to pick up on a few of the other themes in the book that we haven't discussed yet. And I also think try to remember chapter 30 and the zaniness of it and look for some of those, quote, spelling mistakes because I think he did that on purpose. Um, and this just reinforces this spontaneity of the book as a whole as we kind of end the book as we get to uh, the, the conclusion. All right. Did, did your mom ever say anything about any of the spelling? No, she did not. She just missed that part. <laughs> she missed that part. Well, we won't hold that against her, will we? Yeah, keep that between us. <laughs> well, if this goes up on YouTube, it probably won't stay between us. Okay, maybe she'll skip this video. <laughs> Now, as I read this the second time through, uh, now as an adult, I actually thought this was a really great story for, you know, for a young reader. But there's also some pretty deep themes here that we could pull out. And uh, maybe I can convince Una to do this uh, a full read through and analysis video one day because there's some pretty good stuff here about economic growth. I also think there's this idea of kind of the Cold War looming in the background that you can see the underlying tones of maybe the Red Scare a little bit here as well. And I think that you see this kind of of, uh, Great Britain versus U.S. economic divide. Uh, you see this divide of the two nations' massive wealth and how it, it's portrayed and when it's mentioned in the book, the United States, that they come from this you know excessive need of material possession. So I think there's some little few hints and nuances that we could maybe pull out if we went you know in a deep dive in this book as well. But overall, uh, I absolutely love this book as a kid. What did you think of it? I really liked it. Oh, she must have because she's screaming. She really liked it. <laughs> so, Nor yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Rereading this as an adult, I think this is a good children's book. I think that, you know, if you took this maybe even to a middle school advanced honors class, you could still pull some really good discussion out of it and talk about some of those deeper themes that Roald Dahl was trying to get here. So, for me, my subjective rating today, I'm going to give it a solid seven. I would give it a 10. 10. All right. So your very first book out of the gate, you're giving it a 10. That's the highest rating you can get. 
That's kind of crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have any final thoughts or anything else you want to say? I like um how the silkworm helps the spider um build string to get the birds to hang on to the peach stem so it could lift them out of the water. No, that's true. Yeah, so the teamwork, very important there as well. You also like the part with the glow worm, right? She lit up the whole peach. Yeah, she was like a giant light bulb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate your time today. So I want to thank my very special guest for coming on and helping us out with her very first chapter novel. Keep chugging along at some of those books, especially I know sometimes in school you're reading something you may not truly enjoy, but there are a lot of passionate books out there that uh, I'm sure you can delve into eventually. And I hope it gets your kids reading it too. Like it and subscribe. <laughs> I want to try it again. You had the whole thing. You were like, smash the like, make sure you subscribe. Da -da -da -da. Remember your little thing? Yeah, do that. Click the subscribe button, turn on notification, give us a huge thumbs up. Boom. Peace. <laughs>